Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to a third update of the progress that we're making here in the refurbishment of the Green Lane Masjid, the Green Lane Independent School. Today we alhamdulillah have reached a milestone where we have uh, excavated the pool and our next stage is inshallah to go further. But we've opened the pool up to the public and we've just come across a brother who's giving us some detail of his experiences here in the baths area. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. What's your name brother? Uh, my name is Sohail Raja. Assalamu alaikum. Hi. I just want to explain that um, uh, in the 60s I grew up in South and on the sea. It was very far away and uh, we had no experience of uh, what inner city life was like. Uh, in 1970, uh, we moved to Birmingham and uh, we came to live at 71 Green Lane, which was my uncle's house. Which is around the corner from here. Yes. Uh, the house is no longer there now. It's an old Victorian house and it had no baths. And when we, were, uh, when we asked where to go and bathe, they said across the road. And How old was you then? Uh, I was uh, nine. Nine years old. Nine years old. And, um, Basically, it was very expensive for us, you know, at the time, one shilling to have a bar. So, once a week we came here, yes. and we paid one shilling, yes. and they opened a cubicle, they filled it with hot water for you, and then you had your bar. The rest of the time, you didn't actually swim in the pool at that age, at that time. No, no, but do you I remember think, seeing the pool? I think this, the pool was closed off at that time, okay. yeah, uh, yeah. but um, most of the place was being used. Then uh, one part was library, yes. which we used um, the every other day. Was, there weren't many places to go at that yes. time, and the library was a great place for little children to go and read and read books there. There were newspapers on one side, and you could just read them, and there was a little section for, uh, for children, which is the actual uh, uh, very you know, tip at the corner yes. of, of, of the road there. That was the entrance of the library. The bits the brother remember is actually the pool. There's two pools here, a primary and a secondary pool first class and the second class swim. In the center between the two are baths, which we now use as our uh, masjid and prayer facility. But the brother remembers those areas. Yes, yes, yes. It's not, we mustn't forget that, you know, just only a few brief years ago, right, many homes in, in Birmingham did not have a bath. And this is what these institutions were made for. Yes, that's right. That's and now right. we found a great, mashallah, new use for them. And uh, not made the here. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. To my right, to my right we have Abdul Qiyum who's the treasurer of the masjid. To my left we have Pete who's a structural engineer on the project. Just some question between you guys. Uh, firstly, Zakalah Abdul Qiyum, what sparked off the, the, this project and from your perspective of being involved in the masjid? Tell me a bit about how we managed to get this project started, alhamdulillah. Well, I think there was a, it was, was realised that there's a need uh, to develop the old masjid in the community hall. And uh, when we thought about it, we thought, well, what's the best use we could put the masjid to and the community hall? We needed a masjid, obviously, um, but we felt that there's a lot of space here um, and, uh, you know, we could, we could make better use of it so that the building is being used to its full capacity. And so, alhamdulillah, the, then the, we thought about the school and we decided that the school is probably the best use because the building will be used during the day yes. uh, and also in the evenings and, and, and on weekends it can be used, the, the additional facility can be used for the masjid, for the madrasa and for all the other activities that are going on at the masjid, alhamdulillah. Clearly there's a need, a need for the space and one of the things that we had to do was to excavate the basement and, and bring out this swimming pool. Pete here is a structural engineer on the project who is facing the challenges of making sure that this basement stands up when we're ready to use it. Pete, what are some of the challenges that you're facing to actually excavate below uh, this level? Well obviously there's, the, there's a base to the swimming pool here but once you take that out it's just ordinary ground and there's nothing to stop that wall falling over if you put the base out. So we've got to go down there, underpin that wall dig all this out and put brand new wall and base in to stop it all falling in. So from the level we're at now, how much further are we going to go down? About another two metres approximately. Another two metres. Give or take. And other challenges? What other structural challenges have you had whilst well, we've been doing a refurbishment? Some, some of the roof beams are a little bit, uh, shall we say, worse, the worse for wear, as you, right. as you know. Yeah. So we've uh, put additional structural frames in the windows, which, you can't, which aren't obvious, yeah. to, to, get, to strengthen it up. Yeah. And uh, cleaned it all up, painted up, new, new openings in the walls, to, yeah. some openings into there. And that's, that's it at the moment, that's it, obviously the next floor to go in eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Which is another structure to go in to raise yes. the floor. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you very that's much, Pete. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.